Welcome back to Is It Still Good, the channel where we watch older films and let you know if they still hold up. Today, we're going to watch a banger from 1995, Heat. Heat is rated R, runs 2 hours 50 minutes, I mean it's like a 3 hour film, it's an action crime drama, and IMDB rates this 8.3 out of 10. Do I agree? Well stick around to the end to find out. It was nominated for like 14 awards, stars Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Val Kilmer, John Voight, Tom Sizemore is excellent in this. Ashley Judd, Wes Studi, who you might recall from a bunch of things. Ted Levine was Buffalo Bob in Silence of the Lambs. You know, even young Natalie Portman's in it. Hank Azaria. I mean, it's a really, really stacked cast. This was written and directed by Michael Mann, and I consider this to be his masterpiece. Okay, spoiler on that. And the synopsis here is Hunters and Their Prey. Neil and his professional criminal crew hunt to score big money targets like banks, vaults, armored cars, and are in turn hunted by Lieutenant Vincent Hanna and his team of cops in the robbery slash homicide police division. A botched job puts Hanna onto their trail while they regroup and try to put together one last big retirement score. Neil and Vincent are similar in many ways, including their troubled personal lives. At a crucial moment in his life, Neil disobeys the dictum taught to him long ago by his criminal mentor. Never have anything in your life that you can't walk out on in 30 seconds flat if you spot the heat coming around the corner as he falls in love. Thus, the stage is set for a suspenseful ending. Okay, that's a synopsis on uh, IMD Beers. And um, there's a lot of good quotes for this. And as many of you guys know who know me, anytime I had needed money pretty much throughout my life between endeavors, I had fallen back onto a private security career of sorts. I've done a lot of private security work and I was an armed guard for many years and so on. And I remember in armed guard training, in more than one job I've had, they have shown me the infamous shootout from Heat. And Michael Mann had microphones carefully placed around the set so the audio could be captured live and it really gives you a sense that this is really happening. But the reason that they showed us this shootout in training, it's a great showcase for like vantage points, covering Fryer, how to work in tandem as a team, how to get to an objective while using basically round count to get you there. And, um, you know, it's based on a very famous shootout that's happened in real life, but we won't go into that now. But it just kind of exemplifies how much realism is in this film. It's a very carefully thought out, like, real, gritty, grounded film where you really believe that this stuff is happening all around us it's like our universe but it's a universe within the universe of like you know high profile criminals and um super cops that are chasing them and i remember at the time when this came out it was a big deal because it was pretty much the first time that pacino and de niro were both mega stars at the time were on screen together at once i think in the godfather they're both in that but it's like um when vito goes back to sicily he's played by de niro and uh, Pacino's Michael, you know, but they're not on screen at the same time. So this was something that everybody was clamoring for. I loved every minute of this movie. I mean, it's got everybody in it, all the way down to like, Henry Rollins is like one of the bodyguards. Like you'll, you'll just notice so many faces that stand out that went on to have like mega careers in other ways. And I don't know, it was really cool to see the juxtaposition between uh, Neil and Lieutenant Hannah, how their lives are so similar, their personal lives are falling apart. How, it's, how much pressure both sides are on. One of the few films I can think of where you root for both the good guys and bad guys. Danny Trejo's in it, like, just a stacked, stacked cast. Everybody's acting their heart out. Tom Sizemore's outstanding in, in the scenes he's in. And I just really, really enjoyed it. You know, possibly everybody's favorite part of the movie other than the big old shootout at the end is um, Lieutenant Hannah takes a chopper who's been tailing Neil, you know, the head uh, robber guy and pulls him over to ask him to go to coffee with him. And they just have a face-to-face -face about all this, and it's just very interesting how both men have standards, both men have a level of honor, a code of honor that they live by. Neither man knows how to do anything else, nor is willing to, how they need each other in a way. Right up until, spoiler, Neil's death at the end, Lieutenant Hannah even, like, holds his hand as he's passing. You know, it's just kind of tragic. Kind of tragic and just very well written, very well directed, just like a beautiful film, you know, and I had a great time. I think it's way too long, don't get me wrong, but it's so well done, I don't mind. I just leave it on and stare at it. 
It's awesome. It's probably too long for most of you guys, I gotta be honest. And if I'm being objective, it would probably lose rating points based on that. But I have to rate this one the way I, I saw it, and I just watched this last night. IMDb gives it 8.3 out of 10. What do I give it? Let's try to sell you guys a book, and I'll be right back with the number score. Okay, hopefully you guys bought one of my books. Remember, the audiobook for Unkillable Joe is on Audible now. That's how you support the channel. Heat. IMDb says 8.3 out of 10. Do I agree? Sort of. Slightly higher on my end. 8.6 out of 10 is what I give this. 8.6. I even remember, like, John Voight's pretty good in it. They're all good. Like, it's just an ensemble cast. Everybody's crushing. Val Kilmer's rock solid. It's just a good, good movie. I love his relationship with Ashley Judd. You know, it's, it's in turmoil, don't get me wrong. You know, she's cheating on him with Frank Azaria. But at the same time, I have to be objective about everything. I realize most of you guys would rate this lower, not being into the cops and robbers thing. The film's damn near three hours long. It's crazy. But that being said, I really enjoy this stuff. And for me, it was just num-nums the whole time. You know what I mean? Like, I just enjoyed every scene. The actors are all putting on clinics. You know, it's just like you could study this film in any number of ways. Michael Mann crushed it with this. I don't know what happened to this guy's career, but he certainly has shown with heat that he can make an outstanding film. And yes, this film is going to make it into my Hall of Fame playlist. But yeah, 8.6. I can't go any higher than that based on it just being way too long. There's a few scenes you could cut, sure, but they all kind of help flesh out the characters. So it's kind of hard to say which scene could be cut, but if I had to... I could probably get this down to like a two hour film. And I think it would be just perfect. This is like a really grown up point break, you know, or something. So that's my two cents. Let me know in the comments what you think of Heat. I know a lot of people love this movie. I had to watch it because they were taking it off Netflix soon. So I was like, ooh, let me watch Heat. Love Heat. And it held up. It's still really, really, really good. Still feels like a modern film. Very tragic. And if you're really into like, you know, actors and, and strong performances, this one's going to be num nums for you all day. But that's my two cents. You let me know what you thought in the comments, whether or not I'm way off base. What do you give it out of 10? When's the last time you saw Heat? And could you get through all three hours of this film in one sitting? Let me know. And I'll see you guys next time on Is It Still Good? Ha, 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 ha.